Have you ever wondered what if there were only five distilleries out there? Well, today we are covering the concept of if there were only five distilleries out there, which ones would I choose to keep? But before we get in today's video, please do me that favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Helps us out a ton, and we seriously appreciate the support. But let's get in today's video. You can only have five distilleries. New concept, new video concept. I'm gonna try to get everyone into it, but you know, we've, we've been seeing a lot of these, you can only have five whiskeys according to Reddit, you can only have five bourbons, so on and so forth, like you can only keep five whiskeys. This is kind of along the same vein, but instead of whiskeys, we're talking about whole on distilleries. You can only keep five distilleries. It does not matter what they distill or where they're located, just there's only five distilleries out there. What are the five you're keeping? I challenge anyone who runs their own YouTube or you know social media sphere, whiskey channel, whatever the heck you want to call it, thing on their own. Make make a video or you know make a post. What would your only five distilleries be? I'm curious to see what everyone out there has to say about what would be your only five distilleries. So for me to kick it off, my beloved, my North Star, my go-to distillery, Old Forester, baby, Old Forester. Love, I just, I get all giddy just talking about Old Forester. Old Forester is my North Star. Love the heck out of these. Old Forester was the first main distillery I got heavily into. They're the ones who sold me on the concept of rye when I tried their 100 proof rye, which is a weird rye to get into rye based off of, but man, I really enjoy it. And there is something about that brown foreman, nutty banana, like milkshake flavor profile that I just, I freaking love that stuff. It is so, so good. So not gonna lie, had a hard time cutting down you can only have one brown foreman distillery because I love the three primary ones. I love Woodford, love Old Forester, and I love Jack Daniels. But in the end of the day, I had to choose Old Forester because I just, I can't lose the 1920, I can't lose the bib. I love the 1910. And I've only had one of their single barrel barrel or single barrel barrel proof bourbons yeah whatever you want to call them i've only had that one bottle but that bottle is such a hitter and the ryes are also fantastic i'm waiting to hopefully one day get one of the barrel proof ryes myself and then after that distillery one that is solely propped up off of one name the only reason i'm choosing this distillery has nothing to do with any of their other products it's one name and that is heaven hill distillery. And that's entirely because of Elijah Craig. I'm a huge Elijah Craig fan. And I'm not just talking the 12 year old barrel proofs. I'm also talking just the normal small batch. This stuff is amazing. This honestly, this is a really, really good daily drinker. If you haven't given it the concept of daily drinker, 94 proof, easy very accepting flavor profile, very down the middle bourbon flavor profile. Really, really freaking good. I would love to see it with the red 12 on it, but you know, here's to being dreamers. But the Elijah Craig Barrow Proofs are the only reason I am adding Heaven Hill to the list. It was this or Wild Turkey, this or Wild Turkey. And I don't have a lot of really good hyper aged Wild Turkey. Wild Turkey for me is like Rare Breed and 101, which are two really fantastic stuff, but I wanted something with some real age out there, aged bourbon. I wanted some aged bourbon out there. And so I had to give it to Heaven Hill, just solely because of the Elijah Craig. Like you can keep everything else Heaven Hill. I mean, if I could find some like Parker's Heritage and all that, would be pretty dope, but you know, I'm kind of limited with what I got. But if I had to keep, you know, only five distilleries, I would be a miss if I didn't have some Elijah Craig with a 12 year old age statement at barrel proof. And you know, especially like the B520, the 2020 batches, man, 2020 was a horrible year, 
but it was a really good year for Elijah Craig, at least to me. But then after those two distilleries, my next distillery I would have to keep out of all the distilleries out there in production currently, which thank God we don't actually have to like run down these crazy wild scenarios that we make into videos. Like thank God there's more than just five distilleries because cutting it down to just five is borderline impossible. And I lost a lot of good whiskey that I currently have on my shelves because of that concept, or well, I would have if that was the case, you know what I mean. But I needed something that wasn't just Kentucky whiskey. And if you've been watching for a while, you know I'm a huge bourbon guy. I really, really like bourbon, but I also like bourbon that's not from Kentucky. And I'm not talking Indiana MGP, I'm talking Texas. And there's no better Texas distillery out there than Iron Root. Iron Root, Iron Root, Iron Root. Iron Root is my favorite Texas whiskey. This is a Harbinger. My favorite of all of their whiskey, Iron Root Hubris, which is their corn whiskey, which is weird because I'm not usually a huge fan of corn, but this stuff is really, really good. Everything Iron Root touches is gold. I have not had a bad Iron Root product, and trust me, I've had a lot of their stuff, a lot of their stuff. I want some Texas funk, some Southwest aging style. So I thought Texas bourbon, we need to keep Iron Root. Iron Root is probably my favorite. I don't even know if we can still consider them craft because I feel like they've moved past craft at this point, but they're, we'll call them my favorite craft distillery in the United States. I love Iron Root so, so much, so much. And I'm so glad I have the ability to get some of their weird, off the wall, limited editions. I mean, maybe not so much weird, but I, I have some of their limited editions that are phenomenal. And then after that, we need some rye. And I know technically the one I'm gonna bring up, they do like distilling and sourcing. You know, obviously if you're thinking about sourcing in the rye game, obviously MGP rye, woo! So technically they wouldn't really exist if I got rid of you know, MGP Indiana, but we're not gonna worry about that for this video concept. But my favorite rye distillery out there, the one distillery I'd have to keep because I want some rye whiskey would have to be Sagamore Spirits. I am a huge, huge fan. And again, I know they source from MGP. I know that so technically this doesn't really work, but they do really, really great things when it comes to blending. I love basically every bottle I have from them. I haven't had, just like the Iron Root, I haven't had a bad bottle from them. So at least in the world of rye, if you're looking to get into the world of rye, Sagamore Spirits is a great jumping off point and starting into the world of rye. I think they're, they're a great way to kind of hop into it. And they have a lot of different offerings. They have some low proof stuff, that cash strength that's more of a rye. They have a lot of barrel picks out there that are kind of more of like a bourbon drinkers setup. And then they also have the double oaked, which is a double oaked rye, which is something that it's uncomparable to a lot of the other whiskeys I've had. But after rye, so we got, we got quite a few good Kentucky distilleries. We got one good Texas distillery. We got a rye distillery. I want an American single malt distillery and my favorite Go to American single malt distillery nowadays is Westland. I love these things. They are great. And they have a lot of offerings that not a lot of American single malt producers have at the moment. They have a peated version, they have a sherry wood finish one, they have a non one, they have some picks that are like sherry finish and other things. I mean, this is the only pick I've been able to get, but they have a lot of different offerings that not a lot of distilleries who make American single malt do really well. And their flavor profile in and itself is just awesome. So freaking good. It's on the chocolatey side. I, I believe they add a little bit of chocolate malt. Let me know in the comments down below if I'm offline with saying that, but they add a little bit of chocolate malt in their mash bills. So it gets pretty chocolatey, chocolatey. There's a nice like chocolatey malty punch to everything they do but recently I've been really enjoying kind of the sherry finished one as well as the sherry wood one, which is sherry wood finished as well. It's just different verbiage to say the same thing, but 
that adds this nice like raisiny fruity characteristic to the actual flavor profile which is fantastic it's like chocolate boozy raisinets and i love that stuff i've yet to have the peated stuff but i can't imagine i wouldn't like it so that would be my american single malt distillery so those are my five distilleries that i would like to have if i can only have five distilleries and again that is old forester heaven hill mostly for the elijah craig entirely for the elijah craig iron root for the texas whiskey sagamore spirits for their wonderful wonderful rye and then of course westland for you know the american single malts gotta show some love for the american single malts but that is a wrap for today's video please do me that favor like comment and subscribe helps us out a ton and i seriously appreciate the support leave a comment down below what you guys thought about this video as well as what would your only five distilleries be also, check out the Facebook, Instagram, and the Patreon. The links for all that stuff are down there below. That's a wrap for today's video. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you later.